This video will go over how to import hydraulic fractures generated from third-party software such as Gopher, Frac Pro, Stimplan, and others into CMG Builder. This will be done using Builder's Hydraulic Fracture Wizard, which is designed to assist users in generating and importing their fractures. Before we import the data, let's take a look at what will be imported, which in this case will be the CSV file currently shown in Launcher. This is what the files output by the third-party fracture modeling tools will typically look like. The first row contains the flag SBG format, which lets Builder know that a conductivity value for every single grid block in a hydraulic fracture will be provided later in the file. The second line is CMG out, which is required by Builder for importing, but may not be automatically added by the third-party fracturing software, so make sure that you add it if it isn't already there. The third line just contains the length units, which could be either feet or meters, and in this case is set to feet. The fourth line provides the block sizes in the I, J, and K within the third party software, which in this case is 50 feet in the I, 50 feet in the J, and 30 feet in the K. The fifth line contains the measured depths that the hydraulic fractures will exist at along the well. In this case, we have 10 hydraulic fractures. So we have 10 measured depths, ranging from 1,110 feet to 2,010 feet. The sixth line contains the headers for the columns of actual fracture data below. All of this data is used to define the location in terms of measured depth, TVD, and horizontal offset from the well, as well as the conductivity of each grid block that's going to be fractured within our simulation model. The first column is the measured depth of the fractured data, which corresponds to the measured depth shown in line 5. For example, the first set of data is for 1,110 feet, which corresponds to this value. The next data is 1,210 feet, and then 1,310, and so on. And that will continue for each MD value given in line 5. The second column of data corresponds to the TVD of the fracture at the specified measured depth. This is the input for the height of the fracture at a given measured depth. The third column defines the horizontal distance from the well that the fracture exists at, or in other words, where along the half length this block is going to sit. So with the measured depth, we place where the fracture is along the well. With the TVD, we place how high or low the fracture sits. And with the H offset, we specify how far the fracture extends from the well. The final column defines the fracture conductivity for that location. So with the first fracture located at a measured depth of 1,110 feet, we have three different sets of data for the TVDs, one at 1,055 feet, one at 1,085 feet, and one at 1,115 feet. This means that the hydraulic fracture will be three grid blocks tall or have three layers stacked vertically. And then for each of our TVD measurements, we have a unique set of H offset data, which in this case starts from zero right at the well and extends 450 feet in either direction away from the well, given by the positive and negative 450 values. It'll be a lot easier to visualize the hydraulic fractures once the data has been imported into Builder. To import the data is very easy. Open the data set in Builder by clicking and dragging the .dat file onto the Builder icon. This is an unconventional model that's already completely set up other than the hydraulic fractures. To import the data, simply click Wells and Recurrent and Hydraulic Fracturing. Select the well and the date that you want to import the data for and then click the third option, Import Fracture Stage. Then just navigate for the file, click Open, and all the hydraulic fractures have been imported and created based on the data within the CSV file. So we have 10 stages corresponding to the 10 measured depths that we saw in the CSV file. Those measured depths are calculated based on the well trajectory in Builder and placed at the I block locations shown in this window here. In the templates window, we don't see the fracture width and permeability like we normally would. This is because rather than there being one value for the whole fracture, the conductivity is different for each grid block located within the fracture that was imported from the CSV file. 
To take a look at that conductivity, we can go back to the CSV file and then look at the hydraulic fracture conductivity for the first fracture at the height of the well, which is the middle of the three layers, with an H offset of zero. This block should have a conductivity of 356 millidarcy feet, which is equal to the permeability times the width of the fracture. Back in Builder, we can see in our template window that the hydraulic fracture width is set to two feet. So our permeability that's applied should be half of the conductivity that we saw in the CSV file. We can take a look at this by clicking the drop down menu for properties and looking at permeability I and then zooming in on the appropriate grid block. And the permeability value is equal to 356 divided by 2 feet which is equal to 178 millidarcies. Using the third party import feature in Builder we can easily integrate between software and quickly define complex fracture geometry and conductivity estimated by other tools.